Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Dr. Ray and today I want to explain to you my pet food scoring system. And so the pet food scoring system is something that I developed because um, I got into reviewing a lot of these pet foods. And just like you, I found myself overwhelmed a lot of times trying to pick through the marketing of pet foods and what was actually important. And so I sat down and I devised a very simple system to try to evaluate pet foods um, on an even scale. So it doesn't matter what the marketing is bringing to the table. The only thing that matters is the nutrition that the company is providing and what is coming to the table from a nutritional standpoint. And so the pet food scoring system is a system from one to 10. I've assigned points to things that I think will provide a really good baseline, first, first line approach to evaluating a pet food. And so we are bypassing the marketing and we're focusing on the bare bones that gives a food a good foundation. And so the 10 point system, what are we looking at? Number one, we are looking at the life stage of the food. Is a food all life stages or is it tailored to the specific needs of our pet or our patient? And so all life stage foods are meant just for that. They are to um, satisfy legally the nutritional requirements of every single life stage there is. And so that means that food needs to be um, satisfactory for the most rigorous life stage, the most demanding, the life stage that requires the most nutritionally dense type of food. And that's pregnant and lactating and growth. And so when you see a food that is all life stages, you're actually feeding a puppy food. And so we don't want to see that. If a food is meant for a puppy, we want it to say puppy. If a food is meant for an adult, we want the AFCO statement to say for an adult because their nutritional requirements are very different and we don't want them lumped into one. And so if it is the correct life stage, food's gonna get a point. And the other thing we wanna do on the same, on the same kind of idea is we wanna make sure that they're recommending um, and calculating correctly on the bag what amount we should be feeding our pet. And so there's um, a very, I hear it all the time, a very funny thing, oh, pet food companies always recommend that you feed more food because they wanna sell more pet food. Well, there's a really easy way to make sure that that's not the case, and that's to make sure that the feeding guide is um, being calculated correctly. It tells us, is the company being honest? It also tells us, does the pet food company actually know how to calorie calories for an animal? And so they get a point if they did that correctly. Next is the ingredient list. And there's a lot of controversy out there about ingredients, um, pickies, picking companies fighting and picking winners and losers and ingredients, and we're not gonna do that. We're gonna look at ingredients not simply by the name of the ingredient and calling an ingredient good or bad by the name. We're gonna be looking at the nutrition and the nutrients that the ingredients provide as a whole to a diet. So it's not about winners and losers, it's about a total compilation. Now at the end, after we've found out if a food is a bare bones, good foundation, then yes, we can start to look at ingredients and choose the ones that we want. But right now, the only thing that we're worried about is, is the food grain free or is it raw? If a food is grain free or raw, for the general population, that is not going to be appropriate. There is, There may be a very small population where those things are appropriate, but that has to be discussed with a veterinarian because those are very specific, sensitive um, indications. And so for the general population, it is not recommended that you feed grain-free or raw. And so you will get um, two points if the food is not grain-free or raw. The last thing that we're going to be looking at is the guaranteed analysis. Now, we're not actually going to be looking at the guaranteed analysis as it's displayed on the package um, because that has the moisture content. And we want to be able to use the pet food scoring system on all foods. We want to be able to use it on canned foods, semi-moist foods, fresh fruits. I mean, if you're going to use it on a raw food, you probably could if they knew the nutrient profiles on a dry matter basis. And that's what we want. We want to find the nutrient profile on a dry matter basis. It may be something that we can calculate and we have some videos on how to do that. Or it may be something that we call the company and ask for and they provide it to us. Very important that we find those numbers on a dry matter basis and do not use the guaranteed analysis because as you will see on the guaranteed analysis, as listed on the package, there's minimums and maximums. And we don't wanna live in a world of minimum and maximum. We wanna know what's exactly in a food. So if it says, for example, calcium minimum at 1.0, what's the maximum? And minerals are very important. We need to know what that, you know, what that actual number is. And you can't do that when you use the guaranteed analysis. So we're gonna be using 
a dry matter basis analysis of five key nutrient ingredients that I think are important to um, evaluate a food to see if it's a good bare bones, um, a good bare bones option. And so things we're gonna be looking for are the protein, the fat, the fiber, the calcium, and the phosphorus. And so we're gonna take those five parameters and we're going to make sure they fit the appropriate life stage of the specific pet the food is being marketed to. So if the food is being marketed to an adult and they show an adult on the bag, we're gonna be evaluating it for an adult, a senior, a senior, a cat, a cat, a kitten, a kitten, and so on and so forth. And so that's how it goes. At the end of the day, there's gonna be um, 10 points available. And the closer you get to 10 points, the more perfect a foundational of food you are, you are looking at. The lower the score, so anything that's below a seven, so one, two, three, four, five, six, missing a lot of points there and a lot of the foundational aspects of the food are missing. And a lot of times I recommend maybe you look elsewhere. Seven, eight, nine, or 10 is a very good firm foundation and you may wanna start going into secondary um, evaluation of the food, maybe looking deeper into vitamins, maybe looking um, deeper into specific ingredients, glucosamines, probiotics, things like that. But those are ancillary. The pet food scoring system is meant to ensure that a, that a food is providing the bare bones best foundation. And so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you will um, utilize the pet food scoring system to evaluate pet foods and um, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks.